guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're talking about the tools I use to make art, but you will also do demos and tutorials. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss any uploads. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about my favorite art supplies and tools I use for my abstract acrylic painting. Let's get on with it. Okay, so let's talk about the supplies and the tools I use. So I have a variety here from the ones I use sort of on a more regular basis. My newest tool I bought is the, are these uh, Catalyst wedges from Princeton. They're fairly expensive and I usually am not, don't buy expensive. Um, I got two. Uh, I don't usually buy expensive um, tools. Oh, here's the other one. It's a straight edge. It's dirty, sorry. And this one has jagged edges. But anywho, you should not buy expensive ones. I just try, wanted to try them out. and Because I used to just use uh, credit cards or old phone cards, which would work just fine too. Or, you got all these supplies, and you always get all this packaging. Here's an example. You can see these are on the canvases usually. I'll show you the the day, the... The size of the canvas and the whatever it's called, and blah blah blah. So you can use these to scrape the, or apply the paint on your canvas or your paper, or whatever you're doing. It works just as good. I mean, the cat, these ones are pretty fancy, but I find them a little too hard. But maybe I just have to use them more often. Anyway, then of course brushes, but I'm not a traditional painter. I just use old, whatever, worn brushes, because I'm not good at cleaning brushes, so that's what I'm probably not a traditional painter, it's just more of an abstract mixed media painter. So the, a big brush, and then this, look at this thing, it's super old and all crusty, but I like it because it can make, it makes all kinds of textures and designs on your canvas. Then we have the painter's knife. Also, this is a cheap version, you can get metal ones, you can wash better, don't have all the paint of, in, in the world on here, but these ones are good to just, just move. I, either you mix up the paint or you move it on to the, move the paint around on the canvas or the paper. This is also a cheap one from the dollar store. I also like using this putty knife, or what is this called? Something like that. <laughs> Oh, this one you can get. This is a harvest store purchase. We had it in the house because we used to renovate our house. So that's also good to move the paint around. Especially if I have like a, a wood canvas. It's really nice. You can rarely get in there. So that's that one. And I like to use markers and pens. These were actually textile markers. But they work fine on the whatever I do on my canvas. So, let's move that out of the way. I also like to use this. This is sort of like a sponge dabber. I like to just move the paint around like this. It makes this light, gives, gives that a uh, nice soft, um, kind of, it's really good for doing flowers. It really actually makes the flowers really easy because it's round. So there's, I think, other shaped ones too, but I usually always get these ones. Let's move on to the substrate I use. So this is my sketchbook. This is a newer one. I like this one because it can actually take the pages out. And it's spinal bound, which I like. It's called Canson. This one is 9 by 12. I like that size. I have a smaller one too. Like I have a really tiny little one I use when I go on trips. This is a Moleskin one. Well, yeah, this one is multimedia. So I can take watercolor, acrylic, and whatever. I don't know about oil, I don't think so, but pencils. Good enough for me. Um, I have a, an, another bigger Moleskin one too, but that's what I use to experiment and practice. Okay, so I totally forgot to guys, talk to you about guys about uh, canvases and sort of papers I use besides the sketchbook so I'll show you that now. I have some pretty cheap ones as you can see 10 for 20 bucks 8 by 10. 
I got them online from the Desiree's uh, store. They are um, a Canadian company. This is from the dollar store. Just cute little round canvases. And there's little bigger ones. And then you have these bigger canvases here. They're a little bigger. So, oh, this one has, that's not good. So, see, I got a whole bunch of canvases on sale. And then I got one with a hole in it. That. that sucks. Uh, what else do I have? I actually have some used canvas boards. They they're really good for um, practicing or using as palettes. So this is definitely some stuff I can practice with. And what else do I have? Yes, I have paper. I got this Canva paper. So it's paper, texture paper basically. I don't know if you can see that. This is texture paper. So I got that. And then I got a couple, you can't see that right now, big sheets of paper. So that's what I use for painting. I don't use any expensive canvases right now. Now moving on to some paints. I like to use the Liquitex paint mostly, but I have other ones too. I just like them because they're sort of in between the price between a very expensive paint and a very cheap paint. So they're kind of in between. And you don't need much of this. This basic, even more basic one. I also use cheaper ones like this one here. Can't remember this is what this was from. Uh, the heck is that? that craft store called now. I can't remember. And it was from Craft Smart. That that's not where I bought it from, but it's just a cheap gold. Again, I don't like. It's not about what tools or supplies you use. It's about what is on the canvas or on your paper, whatever you're using. It's more important than tools or supplies you use, if you ask me. If, if you're happy with the result, who cares? I still have these pouring paints because that's what I did at the beginning of the year, mostly last year. These work because they're already thinned out, so I don't need to add so much water. Then the other thing I got, actually a couple of years ago, still have them, is this specifically made paint for uh, abstract. It's very thick. It has this nozzle. And it comes with all these little attachments. They have, as you can see, when you paint, you can apply it right like a brush and make these designs on the canvas or paper or whatever you use. I haven't really used that yet because I haven't gotten into that yet, but I probably will in the future. What I usually use for palette is old um, pie pans because we have plants. I have tons of these because my husband used them. Like in the winter, you eat pies all the time. <laughs> so I, I don't want to throw them away or put them in recycling. I use them as a palette. Of course, you can buy those paper palettes, which are kind of handy too, because you actually can use them as the painting, painting itself. But that's what I'm using. Um, what else we got here? This is my trolley. This is the layer, like I bought this one. And obviously, you can get some at the dollar store. Uh, maybe in the bigger dollar store, yes or at a, they call them a hardware store or whatever. This one is from Ikea, but yeah. Yeah, I just like it because, yeah, you can arrange your painting and it's, and it's mobile, so you can move it around. I also use things like this. I used to use these sticks for acrylic pouring to mix the paint, but I don't really need to do that anymore, but I can use them to move the paint on to the canvas and forks too. They make really cool designs. Again, you can use whatever you have handy in your house. You, it doesn't need to be a fancy, fancy expensive supplies. I have to move things around though because uh, I don't do the pouring right now, so I need to move that out. I also have these um, colors. Or paints I use there from Desiree's, uh, they're student paints, so they're cheaper. 
and not as pigmented, but that's okay because sometimes you just want to put the paint on there and just go for it. These fluid paints, they kind of need to make designs and stuff. That spray bottle, very important. So these are pretty much my favorite things, I think. I use more often than others. Of course, I like these crayons and other markers, and I do like to use these thin markers to make marks, especially for my art journal. Charcoal is really handy too, just to get things going on the canvas. About it for my favorite things I use for painting. I just wanted to emphasize that you really don't need fancy tools and supplies to start painting and be creative. You can just go through to your kitchen or your garage or <laughs> and you find things that you can use that are maybe, you know, you don't use it much anymore, but you can use them for painting and just having fun. Start creating. That's what I do anyway. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, the next video is going to be all about my new attempt to find my style. So you definitely need to watch that. It'll be helpful for you too. How maybe you're just kind of on a crossroad like I am. I just don't really know how. How wanna go, how how you're gonna go forward with your art? And yeah, that's what this video is gonna be all about. So you better watch it because it's gonna be a, like a series. I'm gonna show you how my approach. It's uh, sort of like my own little course I'm doing on my own. Yeah, so stay tuned for that one. Make sure you subscribe, like, and share. And leave, leave a comment. See you in the next